who became famous by creating art that looked like children drew it. Notice the action happening in this artwork. All these people or figures are dancing and moving and those lines show the action. Also notice his style. You'll see all of his artwork has the same style. Thick black lines and often bright colors and some patterns. His colorful, simple pictures made people in New York City smile. Often his art would have a message about something important to him too. Let's learn about the unusual story that led to his fame. Keith was born in 1958 and he grew up in Redding, Pennsylvania. That's not far from here. Keith didn't always follow the rules and often got himself into trouble. He wasn't the best student in school and acted out often. Aside from that, Keith found he really loved to draw. Keith grew up drawing all sorts of cartoons. He would draw them on his homework, his tests, everywhere. One time, Keith was riding on his bike when he saw something that intrigued him. In front of a house was wet cement. Keith knew that if he drew something in that cement, it would stay there forever when it dried. It wasn't the right thing to do, though. The sidewalk wasn't his after all. Should we? Would you draw in the cement or not do it? Well, the right thing to do is not do it. And we know that Keith does act out sometimes. I'm going to guess he would draw in the cement. I, I know I shouldn't, but I can't help myself. Keith left a drawing in front, front of the woman's sidewalk. This is called vandalism and is a crime that would have sent him to jail. However, Keith lucked out because the woman who owned the house and the sidewalk turned out to be the local high school art teacher. She encouraged the then 13-year-old Keith Herring to enter a national contest after warning him not to vandalize anything in the future. He entered the contest and he won. From then on, Keith only became more and more determined to create his artwork. He moved to New York City and drew non-stop. Keith would continue to draw in places that he shouldn't. He wanted his art to be seen by everyone. He often drew cartoons on black paper that was meant to cover ad spaces in the subways. At first, this was illegal, and he got in trouble a few times. Even though he's just using white chalk on that black paper, it's not his, so it's still vandalism. But as he became more famous, the police allowed him to create his artwork. Herring produced hundreds of these pictures over a few years and became a regular in the New York City subway. Commuters would often stop and talk to him, and he became pretty well known. He became so well known that rich people started to want to buy his artwork. In 1982, his first major art show was in a prestigious gallery. And look how many people showed up to his opening. Keith wanted to use his fame for good. He would often put messages in his art about causes that were important to him. And he used symbols to show those messages. One of these causes was education and reading. How does this poster created for the New York Library look? How does this art show that Keith cared about getting kids to read? Keith's big heart extended to animals too. What do these posters encourage people to do? How did he show his message? What do you think the message to these artworks are? Notice all of the action happening in these pictures. Keith's popularity continued to grow. He had some really famous friends, including Andy Warhol and Michael Jackson. He even animated some cartoons for Sesame Street. Unfortunately, life wasn't always glamorous for Keith and his friends. Keith knew people who were sick with a disease called AIDS. 
Here Keith used his art to show how crucial supporting AIDS and research awareness was. Keith ended up raising a lot of money for AIDS research through selling his art. By then his art was selling for thousands of dollars each. Unfortunately, Keith Haring lost his own battle with AIDS in 1990 at age 31. Although he's no longer here, his legacy and messages live on through his own iconic artwork. Many of his murals and sculptures are still in New York City today and are enjoyed by millions of people. Keith always believed in the importance of kids making art and being creative. Let's do just that. <laughs>